Hello, welcome to Dr. Nakamura's lecture series on bridge engineering, number A12. This lecture is the second part of the cable state bridge. 12.3 Design of the cable state bridge. I will explain the basic design parameters and considerations to plan and design the cable state bridge. The typical ratio of the span length and the tower height are shown here. A for three span bridge LC over LS is from 2.2 to 2.5. H over LC equal 1 6 to 1 fifth. B for two span bridge LC over LS is from 1.2 to 1.6, H over LC is 1 fifth to 1 third. B. Cable arrangement. There are a wide variety of choices on the cable arrangement. The radial type A effectively resists the vertical loads but the cables are anchored at one position of the tower, which is the disadvantage for construction. The harp type B does not effectively resist vertical loads, but the appearance is favorable and cable anchor attachments are apart each other. The fan type C is an in-between of them and the most commonly used for modern cable state bridge. There are other types of modified configurations combined with different tower shapes D, E, and F. C. Type of girders. Typical girder types are shown here. The conventional plate girder with I section A, the single box girder B, and the two box girder C can be used for medium span bridges. The sections B can be used for both the single and the two cable plane bridge, but A and C can be only used for the two cable plane bridge. For long span cable state bridge, strong winds would cause harmful vibration problems and therefore the improved gutter sections of D, E, F must be used. D. Tower shapes. There are plenty of different tower shapes. Some of them are shown here. They are classified into three groups. The one column type A, the A shape type B, C, D, and E, and the H shape type F, G, H, I, and J. In addition to these typical shapes, new and attractive shapes have been developed for both steel and concrete towers, such as the Erasmus Bridge, the Setta Bridge, and the San Marine Bridge. E. Stay cables. Stay cables are subjected to tensile forces. Parallel wire strand, locked coil rope, spiral rope are commonly used on the modern cable state bridge. Its tensile strength is usually 1600 to 1800 megapascal. The surface of the cable is covered with polyethylene tubes or paints to prevent corrosion. The inclined state cable has a sag caused by the self weight, as shown here. When it is pulled with M at the ends, it extends more than that of the vertical cable, which has no sag. In other words, 
The Young's modulus of the inclined stay cable with a sag is smaller than that without the sag. This smaller Young's modulus is called the equivalent Young's modulus EEQ, which is obtained by this equation, where E is Young's modulus of steel, gamma, unit weight of cable, L, horizontal length of cable, and sigma, tensile strength of cable. Exercise 12.1 Equivalent Young's modulus of cable Obtain the equivalent Young's modulus of the following cable. Sigma, L, E, and gamma are given here. Let me show an example for a cable with sigma equal 300 newton per square millimeters and L equal 400 meters. Using the formula, we can calculate E equivalent like this. This graph shows the equivalent Young's modulus of the given cases. It becomes smaller with a longer cable length and also decreases with smaller stresses. Diameters of the stay cables depend on the position. Look at the cable diameters of this bridge. The anchor stay is the largest, and the center stay is also large. Other stays become smaller towards the tower. F. Analytical method Analysis of cable state bridge is difficult and complicated. Usually, two-dimensional model is used in designing the structural members, whereas the three-dimensional model is preferred when the bridge is subjected to the complicated load combination such as torsional or lateral forces. As for the analytical method, elastic analysis is used in designing the structural members. However, to obtain the buckling or the ultimate strength of the bridge, nonlinear analysis is required. Geometrical nonlinearity and material nonlinearity should be considered. The cable press stressing is installed as temperature change or internal forces. G. Pendle bearing and wind bearing. At the end support, the pendle bearing and wind bearing are installed. The pendle bearing resists the uplift at the end support. The wind bearing resists transverse force at the support. H. Wind design, dynamic forces. Wind speeds fluctuate with time, and this dynamic force would cause serious vibration problems for long span bridges. These are classified into two categories restricted vibration and divergent vibration. In restricted vibration, the amplitude of the gada increases at relatively low wind speed, but it saturates at a certain level. Vortex shedding and buffeting caused by the wind fluctuation are in this category. In the divergent vibration, the amplitude of the gada sharply increases at high wind speed and it diverges, which often cause catastrophic failure. It includes galloping with vertical vibration, torsional flutter with torsional vibration, the classical flutter mixed with the vertical and torsional vibration. I. Suppression of wind-induced vibration 
countermeasures to prevent the vibration problems induced by winds. It is effective to reduce the exposed area for winds or to let wind flow smoothly. The commonly used single box section A can be improved by decreasing the web height A1, utilizing the trapezoidal section A2, attaching fairings A3, or attaching deflectors A4. A good example can be found by the girder section of the Humber Bridge. J. Seismic Design Earthquakes would cause serious damage in the cable-set bridge. The girder would fall down from the towers and piers. Also, the tower suffers large bending moment caused by the seismic forces. In Japan, there are two level earthquakes. Level 1 is medium-strong earthquake and level 2 is the ultra-strong earthquake. You have to consider seismic forces in the longitudinal direction and the transverse direction. There are several options for the girder support conditions in the longitudinal direction. One fixed at the tower or end support, others movable. For flexible towers, two hinges at the tower, other two movable. Springs are installed at the end of the girder and all movable. All movable. Sometimes it is called the floating system. These are all feasible. You can choose a proper one considering the tower type, ground conditions, and so on. That's all for this lecture series on bridge engineering. There are other my lecture series. So, see you next lecture.